never ever discredit the good that you can do and never ever discredit and consider insignificant the bad that you can do if you give to the family of Allah Allah will give you more we've heard this on fundraisers don't hurt the feelings of people muslims or non muslims السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي قال الله تعالى في الفرقان الحميد ونضع الموازين القسط صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وآله my beautiful family alhamdulillah the topic that we started last week is a topic that needs to be understood to understand the talk that was given by myself on eid ul fitr at the icb we made mention that on that day we selected four sections from the entire quran to understand the gist of the quran and we made mention that the first order of the quran is in surah al baqarah verse number 21 in which allah almighty addresses humanity ya ayyuhan nas u'budu rabbakum worship your lord Now, to understand the true definition of worship, it is important to understand how things are going to unfold when you, me, and every human being arrives on the other side. Unfold in terms of how we are to be rewarded for our deeds and how a person is to be punished for his bad deeds. for that reason we discussed last week that there will be a scale that will be established by Allah almighty and the characteristic of that scale is bil qist that everything that will be placed upon that scale will be adorned with justice so no one will be wrong done everyone will be treated fairly and let me add a word allah almighty will treat people with generosity not fairly but with generosity allah almighty in many many places in the in the quran makes mention that if the scale outweighs the scale of bad the person is successful so from this we deduced that if a person has 51% good deeds that means he has 49% bad deeds and when i use the word good deeds this is pertaining to the rights of allah and it is pertaining to the rights of fellow beings so a person is not only going to be tested in terms of fulfilling rights of allah but he will be completely tested that has this person fulfilled the rights of allah and equally has he fulfilled the rights of all those that are sharing the same domain so the terminology is haququllah and haququl ibad so collectively a person has to succeed and for succeed in he needs 51% good deeds how allah almighty in quick time is going to judge this is something beyond our imagination as we know that people go to the court they have small issues and the judge is one of the most intelligent people in the community it will take him a couple of weeks with the assistance of a jury 
to come to the right conclusion. And sometimes they make the wrong decision. And they realize afterwards we made a wrong decision. Of course, not deliberate, unintentional, but they made the wrong decision. That's why Allah Almighty, when He speaks about Himself in the glorious Quran, He says, Asra'ul Hasibin. He's very swift and quick in making the judgment. Very quick. And Ahkamul Hakimin. And He's the best of the judges. And He does not falter. And he does not make mistakes. So a person will stand, judgment is given straight away. His entire life is known to Allah Almighty. So first of all, our first goal in life is that we reduce the wrong do the wrong doings. We made mention right at the end of last week that how things are going to unfold is that a wrong will rise and it will stand there. Now this wrong has to be addressed. It's not erased from the account. A good will rise at the same time. That is of the same caliber, the same level. And both will meet and that means the good has gone. So the good will consume the bad or you can say the bad will consume the good. But at the end of the day, that good is gone. So there may be a person, after seeing his good and bad being erased, he may find that he will only have one deed left in his account. But there's no bad left in the account. So he only has one good deed. That one good deed will be the reason why he goes to Jannah. That means he's got 51% good deed. That's why we have made mention many a times before that the wise person is that person that focuses upon how much wrong he does, not how much good he does. Because everyone does good. But an intelligent person is the person that finds reduction in bad. So that good stands with him and the bad does not consume it. That's 51% deeds. In Hakukullah, in Hakukul Ibad. And it's going to be amazing if you think about it. Just let's say, I'm saying a word right now. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al Azim. What did it take? Nothing. But this is a part of my life. I said it whilst I'm breathing. And Prophet Muhammad says, and the hadith is in Bukhari. Kalimatan Habibatan ila Rahman Khafifatan ala Lisan Sakilatan fil Mizan Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al Azim Ajib Kalimatan Habibatan Two expressions, two words are very, very dear to the beneficent, to the most merciful. Khafifatan ala Lisan Very light on the tongue, easy for a person to pronounce. Thaqilatan fil midan, very heavy on the balance, on the weight. And then the Prophet of Allah says, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al Azim. And indeed, these words in which we are glorifying Allah Almighty do not take much. And there are many other words that we say in our life. It's this religion is so beautiful that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has taught us when a person sneezes, he says Alhamdulillah without even thinking. How much reward is attached to that Alhamdulillah will not be known until we stand in front of that scale. And the person standing beside him says, Yerhamukallah. We meet each other and how many times have we said, Assalamu alaikum. And how many a times have we reciprocated and said, Wa alaikum as -salam. How many times we've said, Allahu Akbar. In a four-unit prayer, I think 22 times. In a four-unit prayer, we say Allahu Akbar 22 times more or less. How many times we've said Subhan Rabbi al azim We say it at least three times in Ruku and Subhan Rabbi al Allah three times at least in Sajda. How many Sajdas, how many Rukus? 
So the construction of this religion is such that without even realizing, if we were to put a number to the word Subhan Rabbi Al-Ala, how many times we've said Subhan Rabbi Al-Ala, it may be millions. By the time a person expires, 70, 80 years of age, he has said Subhan Rabbi al millions of times. So we are in a very, very healthy position. Remember that. The construction of this deen is such that if a person just follows it, I'm not saying be a, you have to be an angel. You're doing the bare minimum. You have millions of virtues. But the problem is the bad deeds. The bad deeds will consume the good deeds. That's where we have to be very, very mindful. So that's part one. Part two. A person stands, and Allah protect us from being in that position. A person stands in front of his scale, and his good and his bad is being weighed. And he finds that there's no bad left in his account, but there's no good as well. So that means 50-50. That is a probability. So every bad that stood up was consumed by his good. The good news is, when you get, you know, sometimes you go to the hospital. Um, and uh, I remember my mother in law who had um, COVID. And uh, she passed away in, in the COVID. And I was on the phone to the doctor, and he says, There's good news and there's bad news. I said, what's the good news? They said, the good news is that the COVID has gone. I said, what's the bad news? He said, destroy the liver. So she's not going to survive. So good and bad. So it's not really good, is it? Good is the COVID is gone, but the bad news is that she's not going to survive because the liver is gone. So there's good and bad. So this 50-50% is good and bad. The person stands and he finds that all the bad deeds are gone, alhamdulillah. But he looks into his account and there's no good there. So he's left without anything. So it's 50-50. So where does he go? So Allah Almighty, now th this, this is amazing. So that person that has 51% deed doesn't need anyone or any special favor from anyone to go into Jannah. Other than Allah, of course. Everyone needs the mercy of Allah. So he can go direct into Jannah. But this person who has 50% good deeds, 50% bad deeds, he finds that oof, he doesn't have the chip, the one good deed that will take him into paradise. So now he's looking around. He still has the chance. He may come across a family member who has a few extra tickets, known as intercession. Shafa. He goes to him and he says, you know, give me that special ticket. Give me the special ticket that you have been given. You are secured, but you have a few special tickets. That's how I call it in modern language, shafa, intercession. So he gives the special ticket. All right. Or he doesn't find anyone to give him the special ticket. But Allah Almighty says, I pardon you. That is a possibility. So Allah Almighty says, I pardon you. So there's a few probabilities that will still give this person the chance to make it into paradise. But if he does not find that external assistance, he will not be allowed to walk towards paradise. So now he will go 50-50. So let's say paradise on the right and hell on the left. So he goes dead in the middle. So he looks to his right and he can see paradise. He can see the bliss in paradise. And he looks to the left and he sees health. So he can't truly enjoy paradise. And he can't truly feel the pain of health. So he's dead in the middle. So that is known as A'raf. There's an entire surah in the Quran that is named as A'raf. So it's a station dead in the middle. So he is longing to go to paradise because he can see what he's missing out on. But at the same time, when he looks to the left, 
he's happy that he's not there. At least he's up here. He's not there. He's not there, but at least he's here. So you can understand. So this is known as A'raf. So there will be people that will stand at A'raf. That's why never ever discredit the good that you can do. And never ever discredit and consider insignificant the bad that you can do. Bad credit is no good. You can't buy much with bad credit. You do a few bad deals, right? You fall behind in the payments of your credit cards, and your rating goes down. It affects your entire life. You can't get loans, you can't do this, you can't do that. The same. Bad credit. Bad deeds is bad credit. We need to be very, very careful. Then a person says, I'm not going to take out a credit card. I'm not going to use it. All right? And then slowly and gradually his rating increases. Yeah? It becomes better. And he starts to receive emails, letters. Would you like this loan? Would you like this loan? So we need to be in a good position, good credit. Yeah? Then comes the third person. The third group. The third group, he stands there and he finds that his good deeds are being wiped away. No good deeds left. No good deeds left. But he looks into his bucket of deeds, but there's a lot of bad deeds left. No good deeds left. All gone. But he looks and he finds this bad deed sitting there. Now, these bad deeds indicate that he had 51% bad deeds. So now this person is in trouble. This is bad credit. He's in trouble. So now he's going to run around. He's going to try to find people that can assist him in giving their good deeds so he can become 51% good deeds. He may not find anyone. He may not find anyone on that day. His father, mother, friends, wife, husband. No one will come forward. So once again, he may find a kind person that will intercede for him. Or Allah Almighty comes. And Allah Almighty says, I pardon you, I forgive you. I pardon you, I forgive you. Now let me just stop there. Allah protect that we be in that position or any human being be in that position where there's more evil than good and the person needs somebody to give him the free ticket. He doesn't find the free ticket. So now the best chance for him to make it across into paradise is Allah pardon him. Do you think we should be proactive? In terms of getting the pardon of Allah. Because we may be in that position. We don't know. True. We do not know. We may be in that position. So we could do one small thing right now. That will most certainly allow us at crunch time to receive the pardon of Allah. Would you like to know what that is? Would you like to know what that is? Pardon people. How easy is that? Forgive people, Allah will forgive you. And I'm not making this up. This is from the hadith. Irhamu man fil ard, irhamkum man fil sama. Irhamu man fil ard, irhamkum man fil sama. One of the most beautiful ahadith. Sound. Have mercy on the inhabitants of earth and Allah will have mercy upon you. What does this mean? So the scholars have studied this statement of the Prophet of Allah and they have deduced this principle. And I've said this many a times and Allah allow me first and foremost to practice it and then all those that are listening. If you want to be treated with generosity, treat the family of Allah with generosity. 
If you want to be treated with kindness, treat the family of Allah with kindness. If you want to be treated with justice, and I say don't do that. Always be generous. Don't demand justice. But if you treat people with justice, they say, oh, tit for tat. He slapped me, I'm going to slap him back. No kindness, I want justice. Then Allah is going to treat you with justice as well. That's going to be a very hard gauge by which, a, which Allah is going to treat a person. You always need the mercy of Allah, the generosity of Allah, the grace of Allah, the karam of Allah. So if one person is hard with people, Allah is going to be hard with this person. So always give the benefit of the doubt to people. That's why they say, if you give to the family of Allah, Allah will give you more. We've heard this on fundraisers. But that's the philosophy behind it, this hadith. That if you give to the family of Allah, to the house of Allah, to the poor people of this world, Allah will give you more. This is how Allah deals with us. So everyone, think about it, before they open this mouth, or before they use this machine, they should establish how they're using it. Because that's how Allah will use His sifat towards you on the Day of Judgment. If you do bad, Allah is going to basically come with vengeance. Allah is going to treat you with harshness. So 51% badly. So this person is running around. If Allah Almighty says, I pardon you, he goes to Jannah. But if Allah doesn't pardon this person, then he goes for the cleaning process. I call it the cleaning. Because you have to be clean before you go into paradise. Because paradise is for the pure. So then he goes for the cleaning process. Now keep in mind this that I've just spoken about is only for that person that has faith. The chance to go into Jannah without being cleansed is for that person that has faith. The person that doesn't have faith will not even be allowed to go to stage two. This is stage two. Because when a person stands on the day of judgment, there will be a scale of not good and bad, but scale of iman and no iman. That's the first scale. So there will be a scale. If you have faith, you are allowed to go to stage two. If you don't have faith, from there, you go to where Allah decides. فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَا The end section of Surah Al-Kahf فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَا There will be no weight, no scale for those people that do not have faith. That is the scale of good deeds. So pray for your neighborhood. Pray for those people that you work with. That Allah has not given hidayah yet. Pray for the entire Ummah of the Nabi of Allah. If Nabi Akrima Masa was amongst us right now, he would be crying profusely for every soul that departs without faith. Because he knows with absolute conviction that how things are going to unfold for his people. These are our brothers, our sisters. The deeper a person falls into darkness, the more intense our dua should become. But what we see is that a person, the deeper he goes into darkness, the more we start to scold. And we say, oh, they deserve it. So, the, the deeper people fall into darkness, what do we see? The more hatred we have for people. We should have more compassion. That's why when people in the hospitals, we've seen this, that there are certain hospitals where people go that are not going to return back to life. Mount Olivet Hospital. 
that hospital is so beautiful. They make their last days the best days. Even those people that are convicted and they're going to be executed the next morning, what do they say one night before? What meal would you like? They make their last night the best night. Mashed potatoes, steak. They show that compassion to that person that is in complete darkness. There's no hope for him. We find that we become the judge, the jury, the executor for those people that have fallen into darkness. We need to be more compassionate to them. So our raham towards these people can bring these people back. Maybe that's, that's our chance to bring them back to some kind of normality. We are in a very, very complex environment right now. Very, very complex environment. We are looking at people that are without faith, that have opted to do certain things. I don't want to take an oath, but let me make it very clear. These things that we dislike, and because of we dislike it, we dislike the human being, these actions are coming to our doors. They're going to be knocking on our doors. Our children are going to be, God forbid, but our children, our family, Ummat Ijabi is going to be members of the wrong that we see. It is coming. We can hide. We can close our eyes. We can lock the doors. But ye fitna aane wala. This fitna is going to come. So be proactive. Have mercy for the entire creation of Allah Almighty. And I'm talking about Muslims and non-Muslims. For Muslims, you pray. Pray for the non-Muslims. A lot of people say, can we pray for the non-Muslims? Why not? Ah, once they have left this world, it is different. Because your prayers are not going to benefit them now. But whilst they are alive, make dua for them. Supplicate. For every human soul that Allah Almighty protects them. This dua that you make, inshallah, will come to your rescue if you need to be rescued on the day of judgment. Now, this is the basic principle pertaining to reward and pertaining to punishment. How a person is to be rewarded for good and how a person is going to be punished for his bad. We make dua that Allah Almighty make us from the former. That we are the ones that at least have 51% good deeds. So work towards that. That is our goal in life. Through your tongue, your speech, through your body, through your actions, try to reduce wrong. Think about what you are saying and what you are doing. Think about the impact of it. Think about the impact of your words around the people, you know, the people around you. Don't hurt the feelings of people. Be very, very mindful of that. Because pain is deep. The sin is deep. Ah. That's why the sin pertaining to the word is very heavy. Think about it. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah al-azim is very heavy on the scale of good. If you hurt somebody by words, that is very deep. That is very, very deep. Maybe that one word that you have said to one person without even realizing and you walked away and that person is suffering inside and he feels the pain and it is increasing, it's magnified. It may be very, very heavy on the scale on the Day of Judgment. It may eat up one year of your prayers. It may eat up, consume one year of your prayers. You do not know. Don't hurt the feelings of people, Muslims or non-Muslims. The family of Allah, Al-Khalq Allah. Allah Almighty says, the Prophet of Allah, the Hadith of Bukhari, Al-Khalq, this entire creation, Allah is the family of Allah. Allah is the creator. Allah is the provider. So be very, very mindful. Allah Almighty grant each one of us the ability to do right in this short life. Allah Almighty grant us the ability to make the right choices with this body that Allah Almighty has given us.
Allah make this body a body that commits to a'mal salih abstains from a'mal sayyi'ah adorn this entire body and our actions with akhlaq hamida 